The majority of the world population lives in cities and no longer only in rural areas. Common mental disorders such as depression, anxiety and addiction are becoming more prevalent and are now among the leading causes for disability worldwide. There is a rich tradition of research to see if these two are somehow interrelated. And that is something that we aim to look at in the Center for Urban Mental Health and the topic of research that is actually now maybe more urgent than ever before. So as a Center for Urban Mental Health, which is an interdisciplinary center of the University of Amsterdam, we try to unravel new pathways for intervention as well as policy making to improve mental health in urban settings. And we use as a backbone complex system approach to also get to action when it comes to interventions as well as policy making. When you think about urban mental health, it's, it's massively complex. It's got, you know, it's, it's got to do with your social status, it's got to do with your mental state, it's got to do with your environment, etc. So if you want to understand the systemic aspect of, of mental health, you need to take into account all the sub-elements and see how they interact with each other. And in complexity science we have developed numerical methods, it's computational methods, where we can simulate what's, what's going on. We can simulate the interaction between, between people, we can simulate bits and pieces of what's going on in our brain. Complexity science and technological advances make it possible to study interplays between factors at the psychological level, the environment, biological level, in a moment-to-moment -moment fashion. In our interdisciplinary study, we get these data and start modeling these with complexity science to better understand mental health in the city and how we can change it. So within the center of urban mental health, we analyze large data sets and we look at factors, major players, hubs, or networks of factors that are important. Genetic factors, but also environmental factors like socioeconomic status, pollution, perceived stressors. And once we, we identify these, these hubs to gain more mechanistic uh, information on how this works, we study a preclinical model in the lab in which we have more experimental control over both the genetic background and the environment. We can better understand the underlying mechanisms at the level of networks and even single cells. So in order to explore the current association between urbanicity and common mental disorders, we sourced recent data from the World Health Organization and from the United Nations from 191 countries. And we plotted the association between the proportion of people in a country that live in an urban area against the prevalence of the three common mental disorders, depression, anxiety, and substance abuse. We actually saw that there was a non-linear positive association between urbanicity and the prevalence of these disorders. And the full overview of all the meta-analysis that we included can be found in the recent paper we published in Lancet Psychiatry. The time that we thought that there is a single factor which can explain why some people get addicted or depressed or uh, pathologically anxious is really past. And we know now that it's typically an interplay between this type of factors at different levels. So, let's take this rather abstract figure to an actual person in the city, Jane. She lives in this not great neighborhood with lots of noise, little green space, and in her job gets more and more anxious coming home tired, taking a drink or two. It actually creates in sort of a reinforcing negative feedback loop the steps toward addiction as well as the step towards uh, depression. And if Kane is also getting depressed, she will more and more neglect not only her direct environment, but maybe also in the direct neighborhood. So in this way, you also see there is an interaction with the environment. But maybe, the local city government will extend the park. She gets a tip to go running against her depression and she gets in this positive spiral and with her the whole neighborhood. We do think there is an opportunity to develop interventions that are as simple as possible, but also as accessible as possible and as attractive as possible. On individual level, we do that by developing apps and each app 
focuses on a specific actionable target point. For instance, sleep versus avoidance versus uh, cognitions. We are investigating effects of the family checkup intervention. It's a proven effective intervention. We do that together with the city of Amsterdam. And now we don't only look at the individual, so the effect of the intervention on the individual, but what it also does with the wider circle around this person. You could also uh, go a level higher, and that's the society level. We did a project in Indonesia where we combined e-health, including behavioral activation, with training lay counselors, and we did that to treat depressive disorder. And we found good effects, not only on reducing symptomatology, but it also increased 50% the chance of full remission. Complex systems doesn't necessarily mean that we have to come up with a very complex interventions, but it could also be minimal interventions on individual, on group level and on societal level.